confess the word and allow the Holy Spirit to do a faith work in them. To believe God for what he says and speak. And as they speak, they see the result and they speak with authority and with the power. Believing that God watches over his word. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly broadcast that comes to you in the comfort of your home. And I want to thank you, all our listeners who send us text messages and uh, sending prayer requests and so on. We value those messages and uh, we will keep you in our prayers. Today I want to talk on this subject man's future and I want to draw your attention to the text and I want you to go to Genesis chapter number 3 I want us to read from verse number 9 to 24 then the Lord called to Adam and said to him where are you so he said I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself and he said, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, watch this. Now from God addressing Adam, now he is talking about his gender. And he says, then the man said, the Bible says, then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, watch this, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, watch this, I will greatly multiply your soul and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I have commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Watch this. Cast is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the harm of the field continue in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you are taken for dust you are and to dust you shall return and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living Verse 21, also for Adam his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to, to till the ground from which he was taken. 
And the last verse says this. So he drove out the man and he placed the cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. And may the Lord bless his word. I want to solicit your attention for the next few minutes that we are going to break the word of God together. And uh, the title is Man's Future. I want to begin by asking a question that will guide us as we study and as we, well, as I deliver the word of God to you. What if you did not know your future, nor able to give account of your past? I want you to know that all of us have a past, present, and a future. And many times you can talk about them, and circumstances around us, we can talk about them. And also somebody else or someone else on your behalf can also talk about your past and present. But few talk about your future. But God always knows more about your past, present, and your future before anybody else does. I want you to understand that. Because the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God talking to Jeremiah. That is a very substantial example for all of us as human beings. That God knows you before he formed you. Now the formation of you and I in the womb is another level, it's another stage. But even before you are formed in your mother's womb, God knows you. That means your beginning is in the eyes of God, is before God. And so when we talk about man's future, we are, we are not talking about only tomorrow. We are talking about what God knows, which is eternal. And so the story we have read is very interesting. I know for sure that you have heard this preached from, and I've preached from it several times, but I want to share with you this understanding so that you understand where you are, your position as a man and as a woman, as a Christian, as a believer, or if you don't believe, then this is relevant for you because you get to understand who you are and where you missed it and why you need to make it right. And so, when Adam sinned, what was the first thing that happened? God summoned him. And many times, God does summon us. I know you say, that was Adam, and this is me. From one man came Adam, who is the first Adam. Then there is the second Adam, who is Christ Jesus. So all of us are the seeds of Adam. That's our patriot, that's our region, regional, that's the seed that all of us originated from. If you believe the Bible, that's exactly what it is all about. The Bible says in Isaiah that come, let us reason together. And so we see here God summoning Adam. And God calls Adam and is asking, where are you? That's present. God did not know where Adam was. He knew, because God is omniscient and he's omnipresent. But he wanted Adam to come out and openly talk about his position and what has happened. And so, where are you is a sobering, searching question. And I'm sure if I threw that same question to you, you would be trying to answer in looking around and seeing if you are okay or something is wrong. And God calls Adam and he asks, where are you? Indeed, Adam at this particular point he was lost. That is where he was. 
because God knew exactly where he was, but he wanted Adam to understand that where he is hiding is a lost place. He was lost. And so God summoned him. And the same applies to all of us. When God summons you and I, and he asks this same question, where are you? And I want to ask you, where are you spiritually? How is your relationship with God? Where are you in your prayer life? Where are you in your fellowship? Where are you in your relationship with your husband or your wife? Where are you in your membership in the church you go? Where are you as a child of God? And even right now, where are you? Are you at the right place? Could it be that you'd be home now, but you're not home because you are somewhere where you're not supposed to be? And it happened that you're flipping through the screen and you're here listening to me. God is asking that same question. Where are you? He wants to know where you are. It is very, very important for all of us to understand where we are. And the moment God throws that sobering question to us, he's calling on us to do an introspection, to look around and see, am I at the right place? And sometimes people find themselves in places where they're not supposed to be. Some people find themselves with people in other places where they're not supposed to be. And as a matter of fact, you're listening to me, you are in that position, that place, that level, with that experience, because you are lost. And you know, and you know too well that that's not your place. You don't belong there. And so God, through that question to Adam, to know exactly whether Adam understood where he was. Sometimes we don't understand where we are. But thank God that he knows you and I, and he knows where we are. What we need to do is not to argue, but to find out exactly where we are, so that God can help us understand and can bring us out of where we are. That is not the right place where God expects us to be. In fact, Adam was lost. And that's exactly where he was. God asked a question not because he did not know. He wanted Adam to realize that he's lost. Another thing that I want us to see here, Adam was searched. And what did God ask? But listen to what Adam is saying. God always knows how to search our hearts. He knows how to search our minds. He knows how to search our thinking and our plans and our purposes and intent. And so he searched Adam, and Adam says this. He is hiding. He is lost. Where are you, Adam? But Adam says this now. I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I heard your voice and I was afraid. Like all of us, Adam seems to have had great difficulty to make a clean confession of his guilt. He knew that he had gone astray, that he had disobeyed God. But like all of us, we have difficulties in making clean confession of our guilt. Adam could have just come out because God was visiting him every now and again and they had good fellowship. But this day he hid because of the sin, because he disobeyed God. And then God is not stupid. Let me use that word. God knows everything. God is kind, he's just, he's loving, he's gracious. But he's also wise. And so it was accusation against accusation. And Adam tried to find fault 
with God and Eve was listening so when God asked Eve what is this that you've done Eve also said the serpent deceived me and I ate